Okay, so let's talk about the past, present, and future of frame rates. And I will start this video with a bold prediction. That prediction is that 120 hertz is start going to become a standard. And I mean a real standard. I mean movies, TV shows, consoles will be 120 hertz. Not always, right? There's always going to be 24 hertz standard movies. But this BS with like the 48 hertz and like the uh, Hobbit trilogy uh, that looked weird. There's a weird choice. I do believe Hollywood will move forward and will bring forward 120 hertz content. I believe sports will move to 120 hertz. And I believe... There will be some PS5 and Xbox 2 games that run at 120 hertz. But before we talk about where my opinion comes from, let's take a trip down memory lane. So this is the start of the trip down memory lane because we've got to put things in perspective. Um, people's tastes, requirements, and what they say they need for something to be playable or desirable it has changed and I've noticed it since I've been in PC gaming let's go all the way down to the 3870 and if you look here they talk about how a very nice result was found and that it could keep up with the 9600 but notice like most benchmarks now, if you benchmark a graphics card, they'll try to keep it at settings you would typically write. They're going to benchmark a 2080 Ti and a Radeon 7. You can expect 1440p and 4K reviews. Because that card's going to destroy uh, 1080p. So there's really no point. But at the same time, it's very rare. I've seen, like, uh, for instance, a GTX 1660 review where they even look at 4K because it's not going to be playable. Well, look here. Uh... This is getting, no, none of these settings get 60 frames a second, right? And in 1080p, it's uh, 30 frames or 40, I guess, with the 3870. And, and you can see that they say this is a nice result. You see, at the time, and this is 2008, as long as you got an average of 30 frames per second, it was good. And it, even if it would get minimums at like 28 frames, 25 frames, remember them talking about it on the ps3 that like they wanted minimums in the 28 frames per second region as long as it bounced between 28 and 30 they were fine we continue later in 2008 with the release of the 4850 and 4870 and i really want to highlight this uh here um they say let me see if i can find it here yeah see only eight cards managed to get past the magical 30 FPS rate. Magical. They, they, they're talking about an average. This is fine, they think. 29.8 on average is fine. No, And I remember that. I remember when I played Crisis back then, well, the graphics were so profoundly good. The only game that came close was like Killzone 2 at the time. That was a console game. On PC, it was just gorgeous. And so I would turn it up to 720p, which my weak graphics card couldn't handle well, and put it on high settings. And I got an average of about 25 frames per second. But it was certainly playable, right, at 25 frames, as long as it never dropped below 20. And I wanted it for the eye candy. But the story this is telling is over time, eye candy, it is getting better, but it's getting less and less more impressive and frame rates becoming more important. More important than the graphics, I would say, these days. And we move on now to 2009 with the 5870. And if you read this review, they keep talking about how 60 FPS is good, right? An average, you know, so something's changed. Like a year later, they're starting to definitely shoot for 60. But if you get close, they're happy. And we can see this even more if you go a year later with a 58, uh, with a GTX 580 review. Where, where is it here? Let's see. Where they basically call the gaming in 1080p as comfortable. And it's getting 42 frames a second. Right? Comfortable. They call this comfortable, not good. Right? Good is now 60. But it's fine as long as the minimums are below above 30. So look at how this has changed. It used to be an average of 30 with drops below 30 was great. Not just good, great. And within a few years, we're already to the point where uh, 
good is close to an average of 60 and it's only okay if you have minimums above 30 that that's changing very quickly let's move on to a 7970 gigahertz review and again we can see them talk about here where at least amd is on the threshold of 60 fps right and this is just one game right i'm not talking about the 7970 gigahertz in general but this is considered good and 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 you can see a change in tone right it was okay a year earlier if the 580 well i guess two years earlier if the 580 okay is 42 now okay is a little below 60. it's changing let's move on to the 290x where anantech benchmarks mostly in 1440p and they let's see what's the direct quote i have at 1440p it's a bit shy of hitting the 60 fps average so at this point by 2013 it's now considered only okay if you're just below 60. so we're already starting to get to the point where they expect 60 fps and if we skip ahead another few years to a gtx 1080 review they talk about how it's clearly past 60 which is good at this point it's expected that your average is above 60 so the frame rate drops are around 55 right we're already getting to the point where people want minimum frame rates that aren't noticeably different from the average so this has changed a lot in less than 10 years and let's just keep moving on 2080 ti where they talk about how smooth performance at 4k they are clearly stating that they want minimums above 60 fps that's what they're saying or at least a, about 60. the minimum should not be more just like how just 10 years earlier literally just 10 years earlier 2008 magical 30 fps if the frame rate drops to 28 25 that's okay now it's only magical if it drops just below 60. we expect 60 fps minimums in 2019 and that's because a lot of people game at 120 hertz and that's not going to change i will say trust me when big navi comes out next year and we get the 3080 ti they will be talking about how they want minimums above 100 hertz that's what we will be talking about there will be a few console games that go to 120 hertz and even movies now if you look here are talking about making you know <coughs> um visually impressive movies 48 hertz was such a dumb decision by peter jackson with the hobbit and i love peter jackson but what a weird decision like why would you double the frame rate no 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 if you want the smoothness to be perceptively better and not be in the uncanny valley you want 120 hertz and that's where hollywood's even going even hollywood and before you say why would consoles have 120 hertz gaming lg plans on their entire 4k gaming line which their oled tvs are becoming pretty reasonable you get a 55 inch oled lg tv which is gorgeous right now for a thousand dollars within a year that's they want 120 hertz across the board in true 120 hertz not interpolated doubling frames i'm talking about real 120 hertz with FreeSync, and that's just going to be on tvs and so that's why there will be, I believe, some PS5 games like that, perhaps the, a Call of Duty, maybe not next year, but in 2021, that has a 120 hertz, like 1440p or 4K option with lower settings. That will be the standard. 120 hertz will soon be the standard. So in conclusion, my prediction just is that 120 hertz will be the new straight up the new 60 fps standard certainly before the end of the next console generation i believe on pc this is going to be a gold standard in a few years and the ps6 will just be 4k 120 hertz and 8k 60 hertz or even higher standard and that'll be a decade from now or something right when the ps6 is out but that will be the standard 120 hertz is going to be the gold standard and soon enough the competitive esports landscape will not be 140 hertz <laughs> will not be 140 hertz it will be 480 hertz you already see some monitors that are prototypes there there's no reason for us to stop at 165 200 you know 240 hertz 
480 hertz, I believe, will be the next eSports standard. And within about five years, I think CPUs will be powerful enough to get there. And trust me, people, game, game devs, once 8 cores are standard, they will make good use of 8 cores. 5 gigahertz will start to become a very real standard on a lot of CPUs within five years. And that's probably just where we're going to stagnate. Um, and it's going to be awesome. And here's why it's going to be awesome. Because everything's going to be able to run games soon. Once 8 cores above 3 gigahertz are standard, even on laptops, which should happen in about four years, once 8K is here, once we have 8K 120Hz gaming, which I believe will be here in three years, you know, so I'm saying within five years, we'll have 8K 120Hz standards on gaming PCs. We'll have, not that it'll be normal, right? Most people will still be 4K 120Hz. But there will be 8K 120Hz games like now built to do 4K 120 and 4K 60 for maximum settings. They will build their games around 8K 120Hz and 8 cores will be standard to handle that and the increased AI. Everything is going to be able to run games. Right now, I have an MX150 quad-core i7 laptop, which is great. It has a 10-hour battery life, which is unfathomable, right? <laughs> With that kind of performance. It's, it's absolutely incredible, I think. But it's going to get even better. Because as APUs get stronger, as 8 cores become standard, there is no game that won't be able to be run on an Ultrabook in five years. And the coolest thing will be, you know, maybe like the PS6 Pro and the high-end gaming PCs are running 8K 120Hz in five years. Not now, people. Not now. Think of what we were... Look at what I just showed you. Five years ago, 30Hz was okay or something. Five years from now, 120Hz 8K will be a thing. And if your gaming desktop can run a game at 8K 120 hertz. Instead of your Ultrabook right now, when I try to play Sekiro on my laptop, I have it running at about 540p 30 frames a second, which is good enough to play. It honestly is. It looks like junk, but it, it works. You'll now probably be able to do just 1440p 60. I'm saying integrated Intel graphics, integrated AMD APUs. In five years, if your desktop does 8K 120Hz, there's no reason your Ultrabook that's, you know, 20 times weaker. Well, yeah, it's 20 times weaker. But 1440p is like a 12th the resolution or something, a 10th resolution of 8K. And 60 hertz is half the frame rate. So you're running it 120 at the settings. What will be awesome in the future is when minimum settings are 1440p 60 hertz. Because that will look so much better than 540p 30 hertz. Pretty soon you'll be able to run these games on everything. And the smoothness will be incredible. One last point I'll make is that you do want this to happen. Um... I typically try to game at 144 hertz minimum, which wasn't easy. I have an overclocked i7 with um, crazy low latency RAM, a tweaked motherboard to just try to keep, uh, really keep the minimum above 120 hertz. And it looks, I mean, my brother came here once, he he, I, he played Battlefield 1, this a couple of years ago, on my desktop, and he said, why does this look so good? And I said, it's at a one. 44 hertz minimum in Battlefield 1 multiplayer. And he was playing like a beta map. And he was like, oh my god, this looks incredible. This is... And, and the experience, for those who haven't played 144 hertz, which I'm assuming most have by now, but just so you know, it's almost the experience of like good 3D. Because when you watch 3D, it's like, oh, this just looks more real. As long as you don't get motion sick, I don't. It's the same with 144 hertz, except it makes you more comfortable because the human eye can really see it about a thousand the human eye doesn't see it frame rates but it can distinguish they found in testing at least motion and especially on off light changes at, at least a thousand hertz so really the standard we would want to get to to completely convey photorealism is if i'm being honest i know this sound i know it's a tall order and it won't be here for over a decade but the end goal is a thousand hertz at least at 16k that's really the end goal and i just want to make sure everyone understands that 144 hertz minimum gaming looks as good as going from 1080p to 4k i think so 
this is the end goal it will be incredible it will look gorgeous it will be necessary for photorealism trust me once we get to 8k as standard which is like five years from now or something um you will want to push the frame rates up because you will notice the difference and what that means is even though your laptop won't be doing photorealism it will be doing 1440p 60 hertz and it will run every game and soon your phones will be able to run a lot of these AAA games even if it's just at like 1080p right it will be awesome all right hope you had fun going back through memory lane with me looking at what the future of frame rates are and resolutions uh please like subscribe share these videos on reddit on facebook with your friends and please support me on patreon if you have the extra money